Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and we're in a new bull run phase, and there are a lot of people just joining for the first time, whether it's buying Bitcoin on exchanges or getting involved in self-custody and shopping around for hardware wallets. And there is a years-old controversy involving Ledger and the Ledger Recover service that is rearing its ugly head once again. So it's time for me to address this issue. I've been talking about it for the last couple of years, so I have a pretty good summary of the issue and the explanation. So the issue arose when Ledger debuted their recovery service a few years back. This was the Ledger solution to the problem of their customers mismanaging their seed phrases. A lot of people have lost crypto uh, and uh, hard-earned money because they were tricked into revealing their seed phrase, lost their seed phrase, wrote their seed phrase down incorrectly, or a number of issues involving the seed phrase. The hardware wallet is secure, but the seed phrase must be protected by the user. Otherwise, uh, a malicious party could take that seed phrase and restore their own device and steal your crypto. So Ledger addressed this issue by coming up with a service called Ledger Recover, which allows the user to back up their seed phrase to the cloud. Now this is done in a cryptographically sound manner. Uh, the key is broken into shards and stored on multiple servers. I'm not really here to talk about whether that service uh, is great or not. Uh, it is an optional service, but behind the announcement of that, many people were shocked to discover that Ledger devices were not completely open source and that Ledger, the company, did in fact have access to the private key and could write code that would export that private key. And so the trope arose that you shouldn't use Ledger, Ledgers aren't secure, uh, Ledgers aren't open source, Ledger lied about their devices. Uh, but all of this is an overreaction to a discovery of people that really didn't quite understand how hardware wallets worked. And then when they found out, they were crying foul. So let me try to explain why the fact that Ledger is not completely open source is not a deal breaker. Ledger employs a secure element chip on their devices that is made by a third party company called ST Micro. Now this company is a specialist in secure chips. They've invested billions of dollars in their secure technology. And it is IP, it is intellectual property, it is closed source by design. It is a secret. It is designed to prevent tampering, whether it's physical or software tampering. Now, Ledger devices are 95% open source, but the part of Ledger's code that interacts directly with the secure element chip couldn't be revealed without revealing the underlying architecture of the secure element chip. And that is why Ledger is not fully open source. Now, I should also mention that there are lots of hardware wallets out there, other brands that also use secure element chips. They don't always use them in the exact same way that Ledger does. Some of them use them only for secret storage of the private key, whereas Ledger actually runs its code right on the secure element chip. One of the few companies to actually do this. Some of the other hardware manufacturers use coprocessors to run some of their code. But why is this such a big issue? Well, it's, it's basically around the misconception that a cryptocurrency hardware device should be fully open source. Now, open source is great, I love open source. It's a great protocol and it can be used on large software projects to great effect. But the Ledger device is not only software, but it is also hardware. It lives in the real world. So it doesn't really fit 
the open source model. Another thing I'll mention is why open source works great for software projects, but not for security devices. And we should consider a cryptocurrency hardware device a security device, basically. If you write an open source project, you have a development team, and then they post the code on GitHub, and it's open source. Anyone can review the code and report bugs or vulnerabilities. This is great. Uh, it's mainstream code. A lot of people understand that type of code and can easily uh, understand the code and report bugs and security vulnerabilities. When this happens, when someone reports a vulnerability, there is a gap in time uh, from when the vulnerability is reported and uh, the time that the developers can create a patch, write new code, and plug this vulnerability. And that's just part of the normal cycle. Well, that means that you have a sort of secure software project or seemingly secure software project, a vulnerability is discovered and it remains vulnerable until a patch is applied. This could take a few days, a week, sometimes months. So that's okay for software, but not a good plan for a cryptocurrency hardware device. Your cryptocurrency hardware should, device should be secure all the time, or at least strive to be. So the open source model doesn't fit well for a cryptocurrency hardware device. How would you like to be using your device and then hear that someone has just reported a vulnerability that's out in the wild, but they haven't patched it yet. And now all of a sudden your crypto is insecure until it's patched and then it gets patched and then someone else discovers another vulnerability, and then the device is insecure until the next patch comes out. This is not a good model for a cryptocurrency security device, a device which holds your private key. So that is why secure element chips are designed with secrecy in mind. They're, they're made that way by design, so we don't have a lot of eyes on the code. There are internal checks the people at Ledger have a special division of their company that spends their, all their time trying to break into the device. They're called the Dojon. The devices are also tested and certified by third parties. This applies to almost all of the hardware devices out there that use secure element chips. There is a component of their code that is open source, and then there is, the, there is the secure element chip component that is tested, verified, and certified by third parties. So you're not putting all of your trust in this company. Andreas Antonopoulos, whom I consider one of the kings of the Bitcoin education sector, wrote the book on Bitcoin, Mastering Bitcoin, has a YouTube channel where he has talked about these issues around cryptocurrency hardware wallets. He basically states that there is always a level of trust that the user must put into the cryptocurrency hardware device. The alternative is DIY. He addresses a user who heard someone on YouTube telling him that the most secure way of storing his a uh, private key was using the Tails operating system on a air-gapped laptop uh, connected to a secure printer. Well, all of that stuff is great, but it is beyond the technical ability of most average users. And the ability of the user is a risk factor in cryptocurrency. We don't want to lose crypto, so we use secure devices. But if the person using the device cannot use the device correctly, then we've introduced another risk of losing our crypto. So we want to try and mitigate all risks. And besides, a DIY solution is using multi-purpose devices for a specific task whereas a cryptocurrency hardware wallet 
is a specific device designed for a specific task. It only does one thing, and it was created and designed to do that one thing. So trying to come up with your own security scenario, even if you are technically capable, is really not the best solution when it comes to cryptocurrency hardware wallets. I've been over all of this stuff before. I'm going to give you links to Andreas Antonopoulos' videos down below. I will also give you links for, by other YouTubers addressing this issue. Crypto Casey has a great video where she addresses the ledger issue. And Cyber Skrilla also has a great video where he addresses this ledger issue. So I'll leave links down below. If you have any questions about anything I said, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered.